Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you find yourself in the world. My name is Sophia Arend, and I am a senior analyst at the Global Blockchain Business Council. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the Global Blockchain Business Council and Global Digital Finance's Global Leader Series. This is a weekly global town hall with policymakers and business leaders around the world to hear their insights into their work, the state of the blockchain and digital asset industry, and current global affairs. Today, we have the pleasure to be joined by the Astana International Financial Center Governor, Kairat Kelenbetov, and our host, Sandra Rowe, GBBC CEO and GDF Board Director, for a conversation and live audience Q&A on the creation of the Astana International Financial Center, the AIFC's mission, its role in positioning Kazakhstan as a global center for business and finance, the impact of the Belt and Road Initiative, and AIFC's work in the fintech and blockchain technology space. Before we begin, I would like to introduce our esteemed guest. Mr. Kellen Betov was appointed AIFC governor by order of the president of Kazakhstan on the 24th of December, 2015. He heads the AIFC and is a member of the AIFC Management Council. From 2013 to 2015, Mr. Kellen Betov was governor of the National Bank of Kazakhstan. Between 2012 and 2013, is deputy prime minister of Kazakhstan. He was responsible for macroeconomics, fiscal policy, state asset management and financial sector, as well as tax and customs policy and was chairman of the Council of the Eurasian Economic Commission representing Kazakhstan. He has also held the position of Minister of Economic Development and Trade for Kazakhstan, as well as head of the National Welfare Fund, which, man which manages all of Kazakhstan's state-owned assets. Prior to this appointment, he held the positions of Presidential Chief of Staff, head of the Sustainable Development Fund, Minister of Economy and Budget Planning. He was previously a member of Kazakhstan's Presidential Supreme Economic Council head of Kazakhstan's Agency for Strategic Plan Planning and first Vice Minister of Finance. We are so pleased to have the governor join us today. We welcome your questions at any point during today's webinar and we kindly ask that you submit them in the Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Without further ado, I'd like to hand things off to our host, Sandra Rowe. Thank you. Thank you, Sophia. And uh, absolutely delighted today to welcome the governor to spend some time with us to learn more about AIFC and his mission for uh, Kazakhstan and the region at large. So Governor, welcome. And please, could you start by uh, talking a bit about the uh, role of AIFC? How did it begin as a concept? And then walk us through where we are today with AIFC, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Sandra. Great opportunities to talk about uh, Astana International Financial Center. But maybe for the bigger audience, it would be uh, good if I will remind that the Astana International Financial Center located in the city of Nur Sultan. It's a capital city of Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan is a former Soviet Union uh, uh, country, which uh, we've got independence in 1991. And I think since those time, Kazakhstan was one of the leading economic uh, power among uh, all post-Soviet Union countries. So in terms of GDP per capita, we are number two in uh, post-Soviet Union countries. And uh, from very beginning, uh, the first president of Kazakhstan, uh, Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, actually uh, focused on the uh, reforms in the economic area and mostly uh, trying to bring best international practice. And I think that uh, also we use many models. So because we are reach of uh, oil. We are now producing 1.8 million barrels per day. We also create a special uh, sovereign wealth fund, which we call national fund, which is a fund uh, account of the Ministry of Finance under the management of Central Bank. And now we have a $60 billion uh, under the management of yeah. Central Bank. Uh, also, we have a, the another uh, national welfare fund, which is Samru Kazina, which is uh, like early stage uh, of uh, Timasek uh, of, in Singapore, like a it's a holding company which manage uh, active manager on behalf, uh, active shareholder on behalf of the government. And uh, this two fund is a kind of best practice which we learn from Norway, from Singapore. And I think that uh, it was also uh, good for us to follow many uh, good models uh, globally. Sure. Uh, I think that uh, the real international influence we start to get also during the different crises. So I, I remember the crisis 1998. So I remember when the oil price was around $10 uh, per barrel. So very similar what happened uh, this, uh, this year in April. Uh -huh. exactly. yeah. uh, uh, 
2008-2009 also influenced to the uh, financial industry in Kazakhstan, especially to the banking sector. So we still uh, uh, fighting with a high level of uh, non-performing loans in the banking sector in Kazakhstan. It's uh, and monetary authorities in Kazakhstan are focusing on this, both national uh, bank and also the agency for financial regulation now. We also, which is quite similar to uh, maybe to the uh, British model of the financial uh, authorities, uh, financial regulation authorities. Also, 2014 and 15. Remember, it was the same uh, uh, crisis for for the oil prices. Uh, those uh, those time, the prices for uh, for oil dropped uh, from 140 dollars uh, uh, per, per barrel of, of brand till 40 actually it was like a more than three and a half times uh, drop and definitely it's also influenced uh, to, to Kazakhstan so and we realized that uh, for, and Kazakhstan itself is uh, has a very vast geography we are nine uh, only ninth place in the world uh, and uh, I think that like entire uh, territory of the Western Europe or like four sides of uh, Texas let's say yeah and uh, yes. so it's a big territory. You have a big uh, uh, border with Russia, with China, with uh, Central Asian countries. And since the uh, very beginning, we've been focused on diversification, on structural reform. And especially after the crisis in 2015, the first president, uh, Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, announced the special program, which we called Five Institutional uh, Reforms and 100 Concrete Steps. So it was like a concrete measures. So how we should uh, change the structure of the economy, how we should bring the reform in a legal area, especially focusing on rule of law. So this rule of law and establishing of rule of law uh, was a, fo a key focus on legal reform in Kazakhstan. Part of this reform was the creation of Astana International Financial Center. So the idea was to create regional financial hub um, and uh, based on common law jurisdiction. So it's quite unusual because uh, former uh, Soviet Union countries mostly closer to the uh, kind of German model of European continental law. It was like uh, our uh, legacy. And first time, and we are uh, yet uh, the only country in the former Soviet Union who implement the common law jurisdiction. So the idea was to develop regional hub for business and for finance, regional in terms of the region of the former Soviet Union, which is uh, also now part of the Eurasian uh, Economic uh, Union. It's, it's uh, five countries, uh, Russia, Kazakhstan, uh, Armenia, Kyrgyzstan, and uh, Belarus. Also, uh, the, some countries on our Caspian neighborhood, such as uh, Azerbaijan. Uh, mm -hmm. Countries in Central Asia, it's uh, our primary focus. It's uh, five countries, uh, which is Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, and uh, Turkmenistan, and also Mongolia, and maybe a little uh, western part of, of uh, China. So these are kind of the former, uh, uh, let's say, bigger term Central Asia, uh, market with uh, 200 million people, and yeah. we have uh, established this uh, reg regional hub. Again, the key uh, part of the reform was to establish the common law jurisdiction. So we study a lot of the financial centers, uh, especially the latest edition of uh, centers in Middle East, such as Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Qatar, uh, okay. but also the previous successful experience of uh, Singapore and Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that makes a lot of sense that um, you've borrowed from the best of uh, many good models that are out there and put that together. I will have to say the common law um, implementation and the very fact that the AIFC is based on English law that's a, that's a very bold move. And um, it is really, I think, um, attracted a lot of fintech startups, foreign companies into the AIFC region. Could you give us an update just a bit on when AIFC started and then where you are today in development? You do have quite a few international participants and partners now. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, I think uh, also, uh, maybe just to remind you what happened uh, last uh, two, three years. So this uh, initiative been announced in, in 2015. And then uh, in, in two years, it was special amendments to the constitution of Kazakhstan, which is allow us to create special legal and regulatory re regime in financial area in the city of Nur Sultan. So, uh, so quite historical for us because it's not uh, it's very yes. rare when it, uh, it was uh, amendments to the constitution when we've been part of these uh, amendments. 
and when the parliament adopted special constitutional law on Astana International Financial Center. So why we actually focus on common law? Uh, it's two reasons, I think. From the very beginning, the Kazakhstan been very much successful to bring uh, different uh, global uh, investors, uh, mostly like in the mining and oil, uh, oil and gas area. So it was like a $300 yeah. billion dollars investment. But mostly all of this investment based on certain contract, which is anyway based on, on common law. So we, co we have a common law in Kazakhstan already working many years. But now we try to focus common law because it's good for dispute, uh, investment dispute uh, resolutions. It's good for, for mm -hmm. startups, good for leasing, uh, good for insurance. So, so many businesses are actually based and focused on common law because common law is actually adopting the uh, innovations uh, very fast. So I think that's... that's actually give us a flavor that we should bring a law which is uh, uh, familiar to the investors and which is very, uh, very much focusing on, on innovations. So, and we start to follow in the Dubai model, we start to establish different bodies of AAC. So it's, okay. uh, it's an entire ecosystem. So which is consists from AAC authorities, which is a development agency of uh, AAC, is also the dispute resolution authorities, court and uh, International Arbitration Center. And here is, I think, that we did a really remarkable uh, work in terms of trying to bring the dream team of the judges, actually, who actually start to develop and uh, uh, develop court and to provide uh, services of the court. So we have a court of AAC. Uh, we have also the International Arbitration Center. The first, uh, the first uh, uh, chief justice of our court was legendary Lord Wolf, who is actually been uh, one of the legends in the common law system, actually, globally. Amazing. Yes. <laughs> yes. And also uh, nine judges from UK, retired judges, are helping us to now to provide these services. Again, that's uh, also a game changer in terms of the bringing foreign direct uh, investment, uh, where the investors can be guaranteed by the protection in a common law jurisdiction, through the structuring the uh, uh, companies and SPVs and through the getting access to the dispute resolution authorities. We will also establish new marketplace, which is a new uh, stock exchange. We call it Astana International Exchange. Astana International Exchange being created in the uh, late, uh, late uh, to, uh, 2018. And uh, we have a remarkable shareholders, actually. We have, a, from one side, uh, we have, a, and using the, uh, empowering by the technologies of NASDAQ, which is, mm -hmm. let's say, close to the New York Financial Center, and also the Goldman Sachs, one of the um, uh, shareholders of us, from one side. And from the other side, we have a Shanghai Stock Exchange and Silk Road Fund. So we're trying to bring the kind of global uh, companies, which is uh, leading in the markets, but also uh, through us, we are connecting this like uh, West and East. So we, this is, was the idea. And the idea was also to use the massive privatization process, which is now happening in Kazakhstan. And we succeed actually in privatization. The first um, company, which is a leading global uranium company, Kazatom Prom, being uh, listed. Uh, uh, it was an IPO uh, um, November, last, uh, November 2018. Last year it was a SPO. And this year we achieved like the 25 percentage of the shares of this company actually listed uh, uh, on free float on Astana International Exchange and dual listed uh, in the London Stock Exchange. So these are kind of the remarkable changes, but uh, from very beginning, we focus on, uh, uh, on young uh, professionals, on young uh, talented innovation companies. So that's why we created kind of two subsystems. So one is the access to the traditional conventional uh, financial institutions such as uh, banking community, insurance, uh, stock exchange, uh, securities sure. market, and from the other side is uh, also the uh, the new uh, startups uh, community. Uh, not only focusing on fintech, but we uh, on legal tech, on uh, on uh, on uh, on any tech uh, like agrotech, mining tech. Uh, uh, on any kind of the dimensions, but in general, these are technologies which need support of the regulation authorities, need a certain sandbox, and we created in our regulation authorities special sandbox, which is allow us to test these technologies in order to understand what kind of risks these new companies can bring to us. And uh, for those who are not familiar, um, you know, 
the governor has obviously illustrated there are many unique features and um, very positive business uh, and innovation elements to the AIFC. But also, AIFC has innovated on the uh, crypto uh, asset side as well with uh, allowing for certain um, activities, which is, again, unprecedented and pioneering. Could you talk a little bit about some of the um, companies that have come in and also some of the laws that needed to be changed related to crypto trading and mining uh, in, in uh, AIFC? Yeah. So let me start maybe from uh, some macro observation. When the global financial crisis in 2008 uh, happened, so it sure. was like a huge uh, disappointment of the uh, risk management system of the banking sector, the regulation authorities, or too, uh, too much centralized uh, financial architecture, global financial architecture. And since yeah. those time, I know that there was uh, many ideas to develop uh, fintech, uh, different big tech uh, companies start to focus on also on the payment systems. And uh, from one side, and from this time, and especially from 2015, we know very well in terms of the first uh, kind of declaration of the uh, different blockchain enabled technologies. So this was like a very romantic time, those time. And I think that in Kazakhstan, the FinTech flavor was very close to our heart because we have those time uh, low bankerization in our uh, uh, rural area. And I think mm -hmm. that since uh, recently, we've also our, not only our mill millennials, but uh, since, since uh, recent uh, uh, COVID uh, crisis, we also been not choose, uh, um, been choose to uh, uh, new technologies, but, uh, but uh, start to be forced to be new technologies like online uh, payments and everything. And I think the, all of this uh, was uh, very, uh, uh, was just in time in Kazakhstan. We study what was with the fun financial inclusion revolution in China, what was happened in Kenya with the MPESA famous case, which is a provided sure. technology access uh, to the capital in a, to the uh, big uh, population, let's say. And since yeah. those time, we start to focus on also on FinTech. And I think that uh, the FinTech being announced one of the key pillars for development for the Astana International Financial Center. And frankly say, when we study the best practice in the developing financial sector center, we, we just realized that we cannot just copy paste or repeat uh, Dubai of uh, 2000s or New York of uh, 90s or London of 80s because it's already too late to, to copy paste. We, we, those models already start to be changed. And I think that yeah. we should certain, uh, we, we had to leapfrog to the kind of, to the place where all of these financial centers gonna be in the next five, 10 years. And uh, definitely it was a uh, flavor of the digital financial hubs. And we should uh, be focused on the, also to be part of the digital transformation in the country and really kind of uh, digital hub for the new financial services. And uh, so this is was very important. And when we realized that what is the key ingredients of the success of the digital uh, hubs and the uh, financial services uh, hubs, which is focusing on the new technologies, and it was the regulation. I think that clear and smart regulation, uh, business friendly and technology friendly regulation is a key ingredient of the success. Yeah. And I think if we, here, I think the two great examples is the financial conducting authorities in London and monetary authorities of Singapore. So these are kind of the benchmark for our regulation authorities. We established with special regulation authorities. Like in those uh, fin financial centers, we've also established special uh, fintech lab or uh, it's our uh, uh, sandbox uh, mechanism actually, which is allow us to provide uh, temporary uh, licenses for the young uh, companies to test the technologies. Then we just uh, build in the special risk model and later on allow them to get the full uh, financial license. Uh, right. So this was the idea to bring fintech companies and to bring from one side uh, startups and from the other side financial institutions in order to let them to work together so how they can help uh, to each other. And I think that one of the also the very promising uh, uh, f uh, f uh, direct direction of the fintech development was uh, uh, blo uh, blockchain enabled technologies. And uh, we try to avoid any kind of getting hype those time when it was too, yes. too popular and especially was uh, different uh, 
uh, even f situation which been with the involvement of fraud of many companies or yeah. not really reliable and not really consumer uh, protected technologies, uh, consumer right protected technologies. And what we decided is actually in Kazakhstan, we decided that we have like a two tier system. We have a, let's say the onshore Kazakhstan and we have a, a pilot zone like a AAC. So very much similar to the early stage of Hong Kong in China. It's like one country, two system. So this mm -hmm. is two system actually allow us if the, uh, the let's say national regulator, uh, regulation authorities are yet not ready to implement the more uh, kind of uh, more uh, friendly environment for the young companies, it can be happened in a, a pilot zone in AAC. And we actually divided this uh, in, legis uh, in legislation of Kazakhstan and in, uh, according to this division and according to the special law which have been adopted in AFC, we created the regulation which is a very friendly to the blockchain enabled technologies. Uh, to the, uh, and I think that uh, we have in a plan in the next 12 months actually also to bring different uh, uh, institutions which is, uh, can be the different uh, crypto exchanges or different uh, blockchain enabled technologies which can work not only in AFC but in bigger terms in the region of Central Asia. So I think um, that's a, that you raise a very critical point is you allow for in many ways a safe place for innovation and um, breaking things and models and trying things out. But then the moonshot for entrepreneurs is that they then get access to potentially not only Kazakhstan, but the entire Central Asia region, which is, as you say, vast and very important. Um, can we talk a little bit about, you know, Kazakhstan's positioning just physically and also um, economically, it's sitting between um, a very important, it's sitting in a very important region and it's going to become increasingly more important over time as China and Russia and um, neighboring countries um, prosper economically and grow. Um, how do you see AIFC's role in um, particularly the uh, One Belt, One Road initiative? Um, you already have, I believe, an office set up with people dedicated looking at this um, is it a facilitation role? Is it, um, uh, are you the heart of um, this initiative in many ways because it will go through Kazakhstan? Could you talk a little bit about that and how technology mm -hmm. will um, support this? Uh, thank you for this uh, very important question. Is uh, Just to remind you again that we, we uh, located in, in Central Asia. So we have a, a, a biggest uh, border with Russia, between Russia and Kazakhstan, which is more than 7,000 kilometers, which is bigger than US and Canadian border. You can imagine there you how go. big uh, <laughs> this border. So in the north, we have a neighborhood with Russia. On the Caspian Sea, we have a neighborhood uh, with, uh, with uh, Russia, Azerbaijan, and Iran. In, uh, in uh, Central Asia, uh, we, we have in the south, in the uh, east, uh, the border with, with China, 2,000 kilometers. And we have a border also in the south with uh, other Central Asian countries. So this is like a heart of the ancient Silk Road. If you remember, the Silk Road was a very important uh, part of the global trade. So those time, yes. uh, Asia and China particularly provide uh, uh, silk to the, to the rest of the world, to, to the Persia, to, to Western Europe. And it was very important to have this kind of uh, uh, different hubs of, of the trade. So it was a many uh, very famous cities those time who actually connect in those time with uh, di different uh, part of the world. And uh, so those time, we, I think that Central Asia was a global financial center. It was between 8th and 14th century. And one of the, my famous joke around uh, the reviving this uh, global uh, trade route is like, let's make Silk Road great again, let's say. That's the, the, the <laughs> idea is now, and that's very much relevant because we are locating between two uh, big uh, global economies. One is the European Union and one is, uh, let's say, uh, China. And uh, I think that this uh, land, land bridge between uh, uh, China and uh, Eastern and Western Europe is very important part of the global trade. And uh, what we decided in Central Asia is that we have to be benefit from this. This is one of the dimensions of the, of the trade. Uh, the other terms that I would like just to explain with the role of uh, Kazakhstan in uh, global trade, the 50% of our trade is European Union. 
20% Russia and 20% China. So these are how diversified the, yeah. the, the trade of, of Kazakhstan. And uh, what Kazakhstan is trying to play a uh, very important role in uh, economic, uh, Eurasian economic uh, union. This is a partnership with uh, our uh, neighbors like uh, Russia and, and Kyrgyzstan and also Armenia and Belarus. And also uh, we're trying to develop the Central Asia, like uh, let's say uh, a regional cooperation in between Central Asia countries. So we, uh, having all of these dimensions, that, and you know that the Eurasian Economic Union is also partnering with uh, the Belt and Road Initiative. And uh, we also understanding that uh, we have to also benefit from this uh, global initiative of connectivity. And uh, uh, because the connectivity is very much important, and especially digital connectivity, probably uh, very much important, transport connectivity, I think Kazakhstan is playing very uh, active and important role. Again, we, we're trying to diversify all routes. We're trying to, to balance uh, uh, our foreign uh, and economic policy. And I think the, uh, what we see now is also, and we understand it is like a processes of deglobalization, especially after this uh, serious uh, trade uh, disputes between US and China. And we see that mm -hmm. there is a kind of tendency to, to be divided for different macro regions, let's say. But, even in, right. in this dividing of the macro regions. So we need a certain stations or places or marketplaces, which is a connecting uh, cross-border, connecting different uh, countries and united different regions. And I think here is a role for AFC to contribute it to the sustainable economic growth of the Central Asia uh, in, in um, bigger terms uh, through the uh, bi uh, building this uh, uh, innovative uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, infrastructure and friendly regulation uh, regime. Thank you very much for that. And um, I very much agree that uh, the role for Kazakhstan as a bridge builder, uh, communicator across different uh, conflicting regions is going to be a very critical one now and into the future. Um, we're getting some questions in from the audience. So thank you very much all for participating. I'm going to just ask a couple more questions to the governor before I turn to Q&A from the audience. Um, you, you know, uh, governor, you have a lot of people here who are uh, young and aspiring entrepreneurs in the audience. Um, I would love for if you have some words of wisdom for those who are starting their career or they want to be an entrepreneur or they're thinking about how do they work with AIFC. What kind of advice do you have for um, particularly fintech and tech entrepreneurs? Mm -hmm. I, um, I, so first of all, I think uh, if you would like uh, to, uh, to have a cooperation with the AAC, you can just visit our website. And uh, with even the website, you can get the link to the fintech hub and also to the uh, Astana Financial Services uh, authorities where you can get access to the uh, sandbox mechanism. So we have uh, already 500 companies being registered in AFC. We have more than 26 companies being registered in, uh, in our sandbox mechanisms. Uh, these 500 companies from more than 43 countries. So we have companies from US, UK, EU, uh, China. Um, also we have uh, companies based in Hong Kong and, uh, and Singapore. So, so it's, it's a very vast geography. So for those companies, mm -hmm. I think it's very much interesting to get a uh, uh, license and to get uh, registration to test the technologies. We have very friendly uh, regulation regime, but also has access to the, uh, to the talented pool of the region. So when I'm talking about talented pool, so we have a legacy of the Soviet Union in Kazakhstan, in Russia, in Ukraine, in Belarus, where uh, very talented people from the IT area, from different uh, MEF, uh, schools and universities. So these are kind of uh, also very good to really to create uh, new uh, startups. And we have as a way also very uh, friendly startups uh, uh, community around AAFC. We have uh, also the special uh, uh, IT startup uh, uh, hub uh, around us. We have uh, two uh, world-class universities, Nazarbayev University and Astana uh, IT University. We have a new school based on cooperation with one of the California's teams uh, who've been uh, founded uh, in the previous stage, uh, the School 42 in, uh, in Paris and School 21 in Moscow. So we have now 
new school who are actually helping to uh, create new generation of the uh, coders in, in Kazakhstan. So Wonderful. this is also kind of a very, very good opportunity. From the other side, we have access to the capital. We have a different venture capitals, uh, business angels uh, around uh, us from the region. And here, I think that these new uh, youngsters can actually meet the, the requirements of, of investment. For uh, all uh, uh, innovation, young innovation companies, and for the young companies who are focusing on uh, on the export promotions. I think that from very beginning, it should be global ambitious to focus on more on global markets. So it's only if you start up and focusing on access to the global markets, you really can get chance in the future to get attention and to, to become a, a, a unicorn or to become a certain like right. a regional leader. So this is, this is the, let's say the level of ambitions should be global because if you are in a small economy for example like in kazakhstan it's just 18 million people it's very difficult to develop a global uh, company here but i think that uh, nowadays entrepreneurs should focus uh, also on uh, the access to the big regional markets and we through aac has this access like uh, to eurasian economic union which is 200 million uh, people markets or central asia in 20 years it will be 100 million uh, people markets uh, and this is also good opportunities to get attention of the global financial institutions we have a different acceleration programs like visa, visa every way initiative we have access to the different uh, uh, famous accelerators in silicon valley so these are kind of the also good opportunities to young companies uh, to to develop uh, 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 to develop the new technologies in terms of the uh, uh, let's say uh, also very important is now that we have to be, uh, let's say, multi, uh, uh, multi dimensions and let's say, um, uh, develop ourselves in, in a different dimensions, like not only being financial services or being just IT or being just legal, but maybe try to bring all these three uh, in, in, in one place. So this is, I think, also good opportunities. In AFC, we have a special bureau, which is a special uh, kind of uh, university of the future, which is uh, focusing to bring global certification programs uh, mm -hmm. to be uh, to be localized in and to let the young people in Kazakhstan to get these certificates through the online uh, plus offline education. So you can be CFA in the six uh, months or uh, in the first stage, and you can get also the access to the new uh, legal technologies, or you can get access to the different uh, tech programs. And I think that nowadays you have to be equipped by different knowledge and you have to upgrade your skills uh, every day. And uh, I think that through the, this different access to the institutions like Coursera, edX, uh, like our Bureau for Continuous Professional Development, you can really upgrade your skills and you have to be also kind of uh, focusing on, uh, uh, on the cross between uh, different areas. So this is, I think, how we, we should uh, focus uh, on uh, in the future on new technologies and definitely you should uh, be behind use your technologies should use uh, different AI application blockchain digital trade different uh, big data different applications like this fantastic thank you very much and um, I'm gonna tie in a number of questions that you have received uh, there's a common theme I think uh, with the questions and I think it very much also aligns with um, you know, the GBVC mission to create uh, opportunities, especially in the knowledge to uh, There, you are getting some questions here about is AIFC cooperating with the executive and legislative branches of the NAT at the level to also create opportunities for locals um uh, so that obviously you will have not only uh, so if you could talk a little bit about uh, how you are interacting with the national government mm -hmm. yeah i think uh, uh so let me start maybe from uh so the key ideas which we learned from the crisis, and I think what was important for us when we built the different uh, uh, bodies of uh, AAFC and different uh, regulation authorities. So I think uh, 
what uh, what was happened in 2008 uh, it was the first uh, disappointment uh, or um, uh, let's say loss of, of trust to the regulation authorities or to the different uh, global cooperation issues and i think uh, what is important for and we decided for our regulation authorities which we we should uh, first of all to build the uh, best practice uh, global standards and we should uh, and this uh, and we should build trust from the global regulation authorities to us and we should build a really good cooperation uh, spirit uh, between uh, cooperation between uh, AAFC and the uh, government and monetary authorities in Kazakhstan. So in order to build this uh, uh, trust we actually start to uh, get access and we start to become part of the uh, all the global uh, uh, communities uh, uh, of the regulation authorities, uh, the AAFC uh, AFSA uh, regulation authorities is a part of IOSCA. It's a very uh, important regulation authorities, which means that exchange of information between different regulation authorities. We start to build a bilateral uh, cooperation between different uh, uh, regulation authorities, uh, our neighborhood and uh, many other countries. We get, we've got access to GFIN. We're actually one of the co-founders uh, of GFIN. This is a global financial innovation network, which is uh, brought together different regulation authorities, including IMF, uh, including the monetary authorities of Singapore. So this is the idea how to get access to the, uh, let's say, to the different, different testing platform for our uh, young uh, fintech companies. Also, we uh, have access to the different committees, regional committees of the Basel regulation uh, uh, community. And also we are part of the different uh, regulation authorities uh, among the Islamic finance community. So this is one of the part where we try to build this, uh, this trust. We've also in a strong cooperation with OECD community with idea to the exchange of information. And uh, in the financial services is very much important to be part of the uh, uh, community which is a supporting standards of anti-money laundering and uh, counter, uh, counter uh, uh, terroristic uh, finance as well. And we are jointly with the Ministry of Finance of Kazakhstan, a part of this community in uh, our region. And we, uh, we built a strong cooperation with the Ministry of Finance. Uh, recently, we adopted the new five-year strategy till 2025. And in this strategy, we built also the uh, key uh, ingredients of our future cooperation with the Central Bank of Kazakhstan, a national, a national bank, in terms of the joint uh, attempts to develop the fintech and also the joint attempts to develop the different national sandbox mechanism and also opportunities to get access to the payment systems and uh, also uh, to get understanding of all regulation authorities in Kazakhstan, which is uh, AFC, but also the National Bank and Agency for Financial Regulation. Also, with, uh, we start to build with the Agency for Financial Regulation also common understanding how we should relaunch the capital markets uh, in Kazakhstan. The capital markets is also uh, not uh, really well developed previously, and now we want to uh, also build a really regional uh, hub for the uh, capital markets, and uh, this is also backed by the strong privatization program of the government of Kazakhstan. And later on, we believe that the privatization in our neighborhood countries like uh, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan also would be helpful to, to develop and to build the, the solid uh, regional hub for capital markets. So our general uh, attempts to develop the uh, capital markets, uh, but also the areas which not uh, well developed previously in Kazakhstan, like uh, reinsurance or Islamic finance or fintech or uh, asset management. And remember, I mentioned that this central bank is a managing of the, uh, uh, the national fund, which is a national, uh, sovereign right. wealth fund. And the idea is also with the national fund to together maybe to bring and localize global asset managers who can help us not only we manage uh, the assets of the national fund, but also to develop the asset management ecosystem in within the Astana International Financial Center. That's um, absolutely uh, astounding how many different uh, levels of um, innovation you are um, looking to um, create. And I think you're absolutely right. Kazakhstan's opportunity to develop next generation capital markets, not the old model, but a new model, 
of developing capital markets in the region could have profound opportunities and um, let's face it, uh, the diversification question will absolutely be answered if um, Kazakhstan diversifies into planning services in this way. If I have to, if that's possible. Um, you have some questions that are going to be coming up to the end of our session, unfortunately. Um, but I um, So, yes, Sandra. Sorry, I I lost your voice. Can we yeah. just double check? Yeah. Hi, can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Can you talk a little bit louder, if I may? Yeah, sorry about this. It looks like my speaker has gone out on me. Anyway, could you talk a little bit, because we're almost coming to the end. There's a question around... Um, the license on crypto exchanges. If you get an AIFC uh, license for crypto exchange, can you trade? Uh, what, what are some of the rules around uh, being a licensed uh, crypto exchange in uh, under AIFC regulation? Yeah, yeah. I think we develop uh, the special regulation we uh, for the uh, to provide in license for the crypto exchange. So this is, I think, the the best practice which we study in in US and Japan very similar regulation. But if you have a specific uh, questions, uh, so, and we are by the way now looking for the world-class uh, global partners who wants to establish the crypto exchanges in AFC, and it should be also a reliable partner with, uh, uh, with kind of a, with a track record. And uh, we would be happy to, to st study together what uh, uh, we need in order to develop uh, this uh, business in AFC. Hi, Sandra, I believe you're muted. Sorry, guys, it's my speaker. It's decided to die during this recording. <laughs> Sorry about that, Governor. But hopefully you can hear me just enough. I'm shouting at this point. Um, I was going to say, if anyone's interested in uh, setting up or talking to AFC, please go to the website as the Governor has asked because uh, there's a lot of information there. And I will test the team. AIFC is excellent and they will help you through the process of uh, figuring out how you set up in Kazakhstan. Uh, Great, we have one more question for you on financial inclusion. How will uh, you think about financial inclusion for not just Kazakh citizens, but in general? Can you please show us your last thoughts on financial inclusion and how we build better financial systems? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, uh, so we might uh, thought about financial inclusion uh, based on the recent, uh, recent uh, experience, which is, I mentioned was we study in uh, Southeast Asia, in China, in, uh, in Eastern Africa. So these are many uh, examples where the countries, which actually has a vast geography and uh, unbanked population, especially in a rural area, which is, uh, again, is a quite uh, uh, controversial in our days when we all, uh, mostly in the big cities, has uh, access to the uh, to internet, uh, to the different uh, online uh, banking and digital banking technologies. So at the same time, previously, we don't have uh, any access of the unbanked uh, population in rural area to those uh, institutions. And I think it's like a little bit... Uh, uh, disappointed and I think that the financial inclusion is a key priority for any government globally so really to provide opportunities which is also helping uh, uh, to resolve uh, partially the issues of inequality let's say right. and uh, from one side so it's a very hard task from one side and from the other side the technologies actually brought a great opportunities so uh, without any kind of the previous uh, 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 vast uh, investment to the uh, physical infrastructure, which was heavily done in, uh, for example, in developed countries, you can leapfrog to, through the new technologies and really using this, uh, uh, let's say, online or digital technologies to get access to the capital, uh, to get access to the payment system through these technologies. And I think it's also, this, this is in, uh, financial inclusion is an issue for Central Asia. We have a population, 50 me, 55 million people here, in the future, uh, 
uh, it will be more than 100 million people uh, in the 20 years. So, mm -hmm. and we have a significant population living in the rural area, which we have to provide the world-class access in uh, areas like uh, financial services, like access to the public uh, sector services, like uh, access to uh, services, digital uh, and online services in healthcare and, uh, and in uh, education, which is actually we all now start to realize is uh, not the issue of, uh, of the future, it's the issue of uh, actually of the past, of, of the yesterday. And we actually, especially when in, in the COVID uh, um, uh, agenda actually requires us to be, uh, let's say in remote mode, we realize that we really should provide this access to the world-class financial services. And I think this is the financial inclusion, one of the agenda of the government of Kazakhstan, monetary forces, but also the Astana International Financial Center. We want to contribute, uh, helping to the different young companies to test their technologies and later on to provide those technologies to the people of Kazakhstan, people of Central Asia, with the idea actually to, to leapfrog again to the, to the new destination. And uh, later on, it can even create a synergy effect when you can uh, have a new, let's say, generation uh, digital financial industry, which is, uh, can uh, resolve any kind of the problems uh, in the further economic development. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, uh, Governor, for your time and uh, couldn't agree with you more that we need to think about uh, building not only new technology, but how do we help people who uh, don't have access today to very basic services. So thank you again. Thank you for everything you and the team are doing at AIFC. It is truly uh, unique and, brief, and frankly, anyone who has already known should go check it out. So appreciate your time. Uh, good you evening. And uh, please, Sophia, back over to you. Yes, thank you, Governor, for taking the time to speak with us today. And thank you to all of you who joined us and for your insightful questions. A recording of this webinar will be made available online and shared with you. We will also circulate relevant links to the AIFC for additional information, along with information on upcoming webinars. Thank you again, Governor, and thank you again, Sandra, for joining us. It has truly been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.